I pull up a podcast as I get into my car. I have some errands to run, and I love listening to podcasts while I'm on the road. I'm particularly excited about this podcast because it's an interview with one of my favorite authors, Malcolm Gladwell. During the interview, Gladwell starts talking about one of the chapters in his book, which he tries to answer the question, why are there so many kinds of mustard, but there's only one kind of ketchup? So he starts to explain some of his research and some of the insights that he came to. And the host, thinking that this this food talk was a good segue into grocery stores, wanted to ask Gladwell about his experience with checkout lines. The host goes on to say that he goes berserk, he goes crazy if he has to wait for more than a couple of minutes, especially if there's another line that's going faster. He asks Gladwell, don't you think this is this is frustrating? This was, it looked like, a Misery Loves Company play where he could gripe about these long lines to Gladwell. Gladwell responds by saying, that doesn't impact me at all. I, I just kind of pick the line that's closest to the last aisle I was in. The host can't understand this. Starts to, to ask him, how, how does this not impact you? What if all the other lines are going faster? Don't you put any value on your time? And in a, in a rare event, Gladwell is speechless. And all he can muster up is, you and I live in different universes, man. So I'm struck. I'm struck by how we've got the exact same event, long checkout lines at a grocery store, leading to two totally different reactions in two different people. And the reason is because it's the story they tell themselves. It's the belief they have about long checkout lines. Find out what that has to do about money right after this. Hey, it's Derek Hagan. I'm a certified financial therapist professional here to talk to you about the ABCs of our financial behavior. So let's think about ABC. Go back to the basics. There's a psychologist named Albert Ellis who very profoundly put together this ABC model of behavior. Now let's talk about that for a second. So A stands for the activating event. That means something happened. You know, long checkout lines, for example. And then we have a belief about it. And then there's some consequence. You know, that's that's how we feel about it. That's our emotions. That's our behaviors. That's what we do in, in anticipation of it. Now, this was profound because it felt like there was... There's no belief in there. There's no B. Experientially, it feels like we go directly from A to C. Something happens and it made us mad. Something happens and it made us sad. Right? Something happens and we did something as a result. That's what it feels like. The, the brilliance of the ABC model is that there is that belief in between the A and the C. So there is a belief, the story that we make up about what happened. So in, in different philosophies of life, like Buddhism and Stoicism, and even some existentialists, We'll talk about this B, this belief being, how do we respond to the world around us? And we might even ask, well, is this something that we can control or not? Looking at that B, looking at that belief, that's how we can grow the space in between stimulus and response that Viktor Frankl talks about. You get to choose, you get to choose your response, but only if you can slow down. If you go too quickly, we quickly go from A to C without understanding that we have a belief in there. Now, when we talk about personal finance, that B becomes our money scripts. So a money script is, if you're familiar with psychology or therapy, it's our schema. It's a financial schema. The money script is a belief that we have about how money works, and it drives all of our financial behaviors. Every single financial behavior makes sense. The craziest thing you can think of makes sense once you understand the belief that's driving that behavior. So a money script can be any rule that you internalize, but they generally fall into four categories. Money avoidance, money scripts, that's generally the belief that money is bad, money should be avoided, rich people are bad, that kind of stuff. Uh, money worship, money scripts are generally the belief that more money is going to make our lives better. It's the pursuit of money for internal reasons, because we think our lives are going to be better or we're going to be happier. 
Money status, money scripts is the same pursuit of money, but it's for external reasons. It's to prove or show or indicate how successful you are. And finally, money vigilance, money scripts. Uh, that's the belief that money should be saved and not spent. You know, once you, you'd be a wreck if you didn't have money saved for a rainy day. You shouldn't spend money on yourself, those kind of things. So there is a belief. There is a money script in between things that happen and things that we do. And they're different for everybody. Everybody's got their own journey. Of all the possible life journeys you could take, you took, you took this one. Nobody else has been on that exact journey. Nobody else has seen what you've seen, done what you've done, experienced what you've experienced. You have your experience. You are the sum of your experiences. And you've pieced together how the world works based on your journey. And I've pieced together how the world works based on my journey. And everybody you know has pieced together their own worldview based on their journey. So everybody's got their own journey. So that explains why we're different. That explains why we have these different beliefs. So when we, when we realize that, we can take a step back. We can grow that space in between stimulus and response and simply challenge our belief. We can add a D to the end of the ABC model. ABCD, activating event, belief, consequence, and disruption, disputing. Dispute that automatic belief. Is it true? Is there another way to interpret this? What is the worst case? What is the worst thing that's going to happen? You know, sometimes just asking this question is enough to, to show you how absurd it is that this is what your belief is. Sometimes we stuff, suffer from catastrophic thinking where we, we jump to the worst case scenario. We'll lean into that. What is the worst case scenario? What if the worst case scenario happened? What would you do? Is it something you can put up with? No, how likely do you think that worst case scenario actually is? Is it even possible? What if a friend came to you with the exact same situation that you're in? What would you tell your friend to do? That helps you kind of look from the outside in instead of from the inside out. Dispute the belief. We can call it re-scripting. You have a money script. And if you challenge that money script, you can re-script that money script. And when you do that, these money scripts, they limit us. They limit our behaviors totally subconsciously. They totally limit us without our knowledge. Growing the awareness, challenging these beliefs, finding out if these stories we tell ourselves are true, that expands our behavior. That's how we can live uh, more peaceful with our financial lives. You only have one life. Live intentionally.